IAM in the IAM talk show with our very own dear Dr. Mohanda Surat, the head of department of neurology from Kim's Hospital, Sikandrabad. They say when you are good at something, you tell everyone, yourself. But when you are great at something, people tell that to you. So something is happening similar over here. Person who usually is hesitant, what's a little away from those formal interviews and the so-called talk shows. But yet, despite that, today we are here, staying true to his own words, never say no. Uh, quite frankly, when I was entitled with, entitled with this responsibility to interview a person of this great stature, both intellectually as well as physically, it, it left me into jitters. But the beauty of elegance lies in its simplicity. The person he makes talking to him seems so easy, so simple, that it just happens. Thank you. So, welcome, sir. Thank you, Anuja, for those lovely words. But as you rightly said, whenever you are talking about yourself, it's much more difficult than talking about others. You can talk about people like uh, Sharko or somebody, but talking about yourself is one of the most difficult things to do. That is true. In clinics, sir, uh, I remember him talking about not only just the dates of the scientists when they described it, the entire full name, first name, second name, basis, everything. And invariably, if you just go and check it onto the Google, it's actually including the date, everything is same. So, a great clinician as well as a person in and out. So, let's go down the memory lane. How it actually began, like from your childhood? See, my childhood has been one of a uh, very prestigious one in the sense that. I never had, I mean, when first, my, when, when I remember my childhood, first thing I remember is we had a phone and a car at home. And the reason was, of course, my father was an IAS officer, IPS officer, and he was at that time a, a student superintendent of police, or then it was called deputy superintendent of police, because as an IPS probationer, he joined as deputy superintendent of police. So at that time, he was posted in uh, this so called state of combined state of Andhra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, everything. It was called residency really. and it was part of Tamil Nadu. And so my father was first posted in 1951 to Kandahar, uh, to Devakota, that was in Tamil Nadu. But prior to that, he was a part of defense naval accounts as uh, he was doing that in Bombay. And apparently I was conceived in Bombay, I was born in Mumbai, a small town in Andhra Pradesh. And uh, by the time I just went to Bombay, I think my father moved out from Bombay. And once he moved out from Bombay, uh, he moved to this uh, Devagodai. From there, we went to Padapuram, which is in the East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. And every six months or nine months, he would be transferred. Okay. And so I had two elder uh, siblings. One was my sister, who is the eldest, and she is now a very well-known figure in critical care of uh, uh, anesthesiology. And my brother was working with Siemens and retired. That was the elder brother. And my younger brother was born in Kadapur. So he was about four years younger than me. And so, but the best thing I remember about our childhood is that we used to be transferred every few months. So school was almost non-existent for me. Whereas was the youngest. And uh, at that point of time, we used to go from since my father was in the service, he was on a camp on a regular basis. As, and we used to follow in the car. Then he used to have invariably those English made or cars or something like that. Second hand, of course, but as a Hillman or he had a Ford or something like that. We would all bundle out early in the morning. There would be early morning, we would get into the car. And which is a habit which has remained even today. Because I have great passion for driving today. Yeah. But that is part of this. And so we used to go through the entire Andhra Pradesh in uh, camps, various camps. And at that time, Andhra Pradesh was full of forests. Forests and no town, no, very few villages, very, uh, very, very few towns. And it was all forests. And we used to get travel through the forests. And you know, sometimes there would be floods, we would get stuck, the police van would pull us out. That sort of uh, childhood we had. And uh, so, but in the process, because we're shifting so much, till the age of almost six, I did not go to school. And all this period, my mother was my teacher. And she taught me Telugu, she taught me mathematics, she taught me English. And she was only a school final graduate. But I think school final, those days, 
that's great value compared to what possibly it has now, in the sense that that was a, an achievement in itself. And uh, when I first, my father then went, was posted to Vijayanagara, this is in the eastern coast of Andhra Pradesh again, on the northernmost part, almost bordering on Odisha. And that is the first time I was asked to join school. So the principal said, yes, I will take an aptitude test. And like what Anuja is doing to me now, he took an aptitude test and he said, uh, so the, I think after the aptitude test, he said, okay, you are six, but I think you can join the fifth grade because I think you are proficient enough to join. So I remained underage a number of years. So I, whenever my father was transferred subsequently, I used to lose a year or so in the process. Yeah. Subsequently, he was in Nellore, then he was Guntur. Finally, we landed up in Hyderabad in 57. And that, at that time, I was nine years old, and then my father was deputy commissioner of this. And if uh, really one asked me who has been my idol, that was my father. He was not only a policeman, a very honest policeman. He was a great literary man, both in Telugu as well as English. And mm -hmm. I think it, some of it, some of his traits have rubbed off on me. So I can speak this language well. I can speak Telugu well. I can write. So I think childhood from that point of on moved into, and at Guntur, I remember one very vivid incident that uh, we used to have a team. I used to play a lot of cricket along with my elder brother. And so we used to have a club called the Little Boys Cricket Club. And I was uh, just about 80 years old. At that time, we had a visit from Mr. Vijay Mandirekar, who was one very famous cricketer at that point. And now people may know him as Sanjay Mandirekar's father. But I think Vijay Mandirekar himself was a very great cricketer. Yes. And at that time, he had come for Ranji Trophy, my father being the SP, he was hosting it. And he presented us with a bat, English Willow. And we, that was a great position. I was almost that height of the bat, but I used to play it. Just to the height of a bat. bat. And, but that was how the childhood was. Playing was part of life at that time. We played almost every game. Kabaddi, cricket, football, no shoes, tennis ball, cricket, every side of game we played. Actually, one of my best achievements in school was possibly winning the inter school cricket championship. I was uh, possibly the top scorer in the match. I was carried from parent ground, which is in Sikandabad, to my school on the shoulders of my teammates. So I think I remember that. I think that is roughly where my childhood sort of comes off. Uh, but, uh, Doctor, we would have seen you in IPL too. We don't know. I mean, where uh, we would have landed here, yeah, I possibly would have gone to IPL, maybe beyond that. Good, 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 good. So, like, what got you to choose this profession? Like, like after having such an extracurricular wide. No, you see, the point is, is, I think, yeah, you're right. In our childhood, we hardly decided who is going to do what. You see, at that time, the openings or the avenues which were available to do this profession or that were very few. And so most of the time, people who were reasonably good in their studies, they were either chose medicine or engineering. So my sister happened to choose medicine. And uh, so my brother did engineering. He went to Siemens, I told you earlier. So what happened is, it was that one girl has done, so one boy should also go into medicine. That's what happened there. And so I took up PPC, although I was good in maths, but I took biology, physics, chemistry in school oh, of this. And so that's where I did my 12th class. When I passed out 12th class in our school, there were only two first classes. I happened to be one of them. And because those days, the selection was made on your school performance in medical college. And so a first class was almost a guarantee. Getting 60% was considered a phenomenal mountain to climb. But today it is a different story. So at that time when we got, I got a first class, my seat was assured. I got a seat in Osmania. As it happened, my father again had this each and he was transferred to Delhi again. He went off to Central Bureau of Investigation. So he said already he had two children who were studying and he had to put them in the hostel. He said, I can't afford, in my way, third person to be in the hospital. So he said, 
uh, it's okay, you come with me into Delhi, you, you can get, plan your career, we'll see. As it happened, so I didn't have any qualms about it. Maybe it's right, wrong, I don't know. But it was not that's what decided. It was not no, like it was definitely just... not predecided. I went to Delhi, I did my pre medical, I got a seat in uh, by competition in Lucknow. I went and joined King George Medical College. Wow. And uh, till I joined medicine, I did not realize I had a great end for it. But I think when I went to the dissection hall, the anatomy, first year, I became really enormous by the fact that we are seeing human uh, in different shape, but yes, a human being, and we, they give them due respect, but we learn a lot from them. And that is where my first development as a teacher happened, because on the table, I used to teach all my Thanks. colleagues, all my students, all my friends. And reason, additionally, there was a great advantage for me. My English was definitely more proficient than those people in UP at that time. Most of them had come from Hindi background. The medium was in Hindi. There was no English medium. Their language was. And so first time you were reading Gray's Anatomy or Cunningham. And, you know, it's a tough job. Yeah, and it was a tough job, but it was easier for me. And so it's, so I could tell them what is lateral, what is medium, much more comprehensible. And so I think that, that's where I started teaching. And that has remained my one of my best passions yes, yes. in life. And I still continue to teach. And uh, sometimes, of course, uh, that passion keeps you coming even now early in your work. In the, in the sense that in King John Medical College, discipline was fantastic. Yeah. The students were meant to come to class at 8 o'clock in the morning. And it would be very well attended. Of course, depending upon the professor who did, some classes were, I proxied for a lot of people because I never missed a class. Seriously? Seriously. I never used to miss a class. And so I used to proxy for a lot of people, in especially those classes which were like PSM or something like that, which are not necessarily very important. So I think, but they taught you time. And we used to work from, especially once we joined clinicals, we started at 8, ended up 8 in the evening. In, because in the every evening we used to also go in the evening around six o'clock because by four we would finish in the evening. Six o'clock we used to go back to the ward. Ward then used to go on senior resident. We would apply a lot as a case. We would work on it. Seven to eight he would teach us. Eight o'clock you come back, rush, eat, and then go for a movie. That's a different story altogether. And a fine time for you. So, but that discipline stayed with me today. And I think time, punctuality, and Staying absolutely. A number of times I find, of course, I come earlier than my students. That is true. 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 Like, I never saw him coming late, even the like 8 o'clock classes, he is there at 7.55 minimum. Maybe sometimes earlier than that. The present tea or the student who is about to present the case still rushes a little later. Sorry, sir. I, like, I never got in front of it. But uh, throughout, like, how were the days in MBBS or PEG? Yeah. The, the days in MBBS went by very rapidly. I think it was, uh, my med love was definitely medicine. But uh, as it happened when I joined clinical medicine, that is uh, first inkling of what you are better at. I think my best uh, capability was the clinical assessment of a patient, clinical science, picking up science. And so what really happened is we had two professors in medicine. Both uh, very learned uh, people, one who returned from UK and USA, and one usually, usually was suited and booted, and another gentleman who took more relaxed, but uh, he was also very, he had a triple MD, pathology, medicine, as well as pharmacology. And this gentleman, but what I mean, he was supposed to be the exponent of cardio, because those days we didn't have subsections of uh, cardiology, neurology, and medical science. But the two professors were, one was interested in cardiology, one was in neurology. Now, what happened with cardiology was this gentleman would be sitting in front in the amphitheater, in front of the dais. The dais used to be, usually we stand behind the dais and talk, but this thing, and the mic would be there, but he would hold the hand mic, sit in front of the dais, and then talk. But even then, the first row was all was 
Feel free to hear. You are so low. Maybe I for phone, we don't know. So, but then in cardiology, so obviously the interest flies. People yeah. don't get enough. And cardiology at that time was also absolutely nothing yeah. great about it. If somebody said there was a systolic murmur, if a person said there was a systolic murmur, we have to accept it. I mean, you couldn't, there was no way to say no, no yes. But in neurology, on the other hand, Dr. Professor Anand Gupta, who was the neurologist uh, and physician and neurologist, he was head of the Department of Medicine subsequently. He inculcated the first things about neurology, first learning of neurology. And, and then, because he said, you can see this sign, you can tell you this is the sign. You know, and it is so clear. Whereas in, the, in cardiology, possibly there is a way of doing it. But what happened is the professor was, what he said was right. And so there was no way to demonstrate or anything. So possibly that put me off cardiology. And cardiology at that time also was, if you had a myocardial infarction, you had absolute bed rest, right? Which caused DVT more often than that. And pulmonary involvement. And second thing was we had no diuretics except mercurial diuretics. It used to be one very painful diuretics yes. were given once in a week or a fortnight. And then there was digoxin, there was very, and nothing else. Very, 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 very limited. And investigation wise, we had a rickety ECG machine which would go for, 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 for. more of an artifact than P wave or Q wave. And uh, so what happened? Uh, these things really made me change my mind about that neurology is a much better thing to practice. That's how I thought. And that got stuck in me. And once I finished my MBBS, you know, my father by that time again, he said, yeah, you have spent enough time in Lucknow now. I think you'll come back to Delhi. So I went back to Delhi to Sardinia Hospital, which was a very cosmopolitan place because interns from people, medicine, medical graduates who did internship from there, all over the country were coming there and doing because it's one of the best hospitals at that point of time. Especially people from the AFMC, they did, they, they did not have internship in their hospital in Pune because it just nascent, they started their uh, 61 or 62 AFMC started. Right. So I think yeah. when I went in 70 to Subdivision Hospital, already three batches of AFMC were ahead of me. Okay. The fourth batch and I sort of commensurate. So I went as an intern. I, I didn't want to work in surgery at all. That was not my interest. My interest was going to medicine and I wanted to do neurology. So as it happened, I had to, this is compulsory yeah. Yeah. internship. So I went to uh, surgery with very great reluctance. But when I went there, the I had within me something to do with surgery possibly also. And the registrar who was there, he was a Sadar, and he liked me very much. He says, you can, you've got the hands of the surgeon, you have the brain of the surgeon, you should become a surgeon. He insisted, he had made me do a lot of surgery. I did a lot of independent surgery as an intern. You won't believe it, I did about 20 independent prostatectomies in interns, which I think, I mean, very rarely anybody will get a chance to. As a surgeon, I did the section of stomachs, appendectomies. So, but my love still remained. You know. So when the so I continued six months in internship in surgery because he was posting at the time, it was not compulsory to go anywhere else. Then I did continuous six months once in surgery as house surgery, but still my mind didn't favor I stayed with neurology. Next posting of house surgery was in medicine. I did those six months in neurology. So I joined neurology in first of July, except I think a few days from now, 1971. That is 50, 51 years ago. Oh, yeah, 52nd, I mean. Yeah, that's true. So I think it was, uh, I joined neurology that time. My chief was Professor Gauri Devi, who was the director of the Noyan Center of Sheets, Professor Dr. Sheets in Delhi at uh, Sargon Naram Hospital. But I think, and I joined as a house surgeon, then I became a research officer, I did some uh, research. I mean, we did dissections on neonatal brains for certain anomalies, circular virus. Then I took up, then I was selected for MD in medicine. So I did my thesis in neurology that was first one or the 
Lindbergh is again. So then, yeah. Yeah, motor conduction. And then, so it moved on. Then I became a registrar there. Then I moved across the road to all India Institute of Technology And so this Some is how it is. It's questions. been a continuation. Once I reached uh, all India Institute, it was a matter of time. I worked there for a short while with the faculty as part of the building up plans for the new Neurological Institute to just come. Unfortunately, I didn't stay there. I moved out. And then, so that's where how this journey has been. Now, I remember you only quoted about uh, James Watson, brain, brain as the most complex thing in the universe. So actually, this quotation I came long time ago. I said, and that's one of the reasons possibly choosing neurology. Because today, the only speciality which remains a little behind, beyond the man, is the function of brain. And what Watson said is, is, is the, this is such a complex thing, this brain. And it is absolutely mind boggling And which is true, even today, although we have so much artificial intelligence, there's everything coming in, but still the brain takes this. And that's, I think, very, that's why I also advise a lot of people to really take up look in neurology and the research in neurology, looking at the receptor, the sub -receptor. all these things would be much more. It's not out of interest, but after seeing your passion, they might have taken up. Many more must have taken up yeah. neurology. For sure. We need to focus. Sorry. We need to focus. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. So, like, but uh, back then, like, today we have a huge diagnostic skills. We have MRIs and everything. Back then, very limited set of investigations, everything. How did you, like, manage going through? No, I, I think this is exactly what it is. It's a question of uh, getting your uh, clinical story right. Even today, I, I am actually notorious in my uh, hospital or my institution. Actually, say they say that if you want to, you can do 20 MRIs. You do only two or one. Uh, the very first incident I met who gets upset for doing an MRI when you think the clinical diagnosis was befitting. So when you say so what you need to do is to get an investigation to support your diagnosis, not, a, not an investigation Please. to make your diagnosis. So what you need to do is say, I want, I'm expecting this in your So this we learned, and that is one of the things which happened. Two things happened in all India Institute. First thing that happened is we had, we were three residents. One was from the army, Major General Venkat Raman. Then uh, the one, uh, Dr. Saraswani Rao. Very bright girl, very bright girl. She, she moved out to the US. And uh, see, the only way we could confirm what our diagnosis was to get an autopsy done, and because we didn't have a CT scan, we didn't have an MRI scan, and no investigation which would give us definite answer about the pathology. What lies inside? And so, what uh, we resorted to was we established fantastic rapport with our patients. And it has persisted till today. And we, and one year, Dr. Saraswani Rao won the prize for getting the maximum number of autopsy. I followed her the next year. And the reason was we got these autopsies. We got the brain cutting sessions going. We had fantastic brain cutting sessions, neurosurgeons, neuropathologists, neurologists, and seeing what we thought was proving right okay. and on the, with the eyes. I mean, so it learned, taught, taught you a lot of things without necessarily going through. But you see, I was also fortunate to have uh, another person whom I would uh, give a lot of reverence is Professor G. K. Aroja, who was my associate professor at that point in time. In, uh, I mean, all India Institute at the time. And uh, when I joined, actually, I joined the department before. I was the senior resident there. He came as a student professor, then he became an associate. I became a lecturer subsequently. But he, he really, put that love of neuroimmunology in me. Because he worked with no less a person than George Schumacher, who is known for his multiple sclerosis as the first chairman of all the, all the criteria for MS. And so he worked with him in Vermont. And he brought that love for neuroimmunology to me. So we worked together in myasthenia, MS. MS was very uncommon those days without Knowing a lot of patients which were MS possibly we did not identify. 
Now we are just better, better where we are better, we are yes. investigating. But he, especially my senior, I think we were the earliest to do climate change. So I think he was definitely responsible for my interest in UN and all, which has remained today. And from there on, I moved to the Science Institute of Medical Sciences, which became an autonomous body. And uh, I gave up practice, which was possible in the government. So we now that we just gave it up so that we can be part of teaching program. And oh, also the yes. And which was, I think, building a department, I think, especially in NIMS, is a fabulous part of the development for me. Yeah. And it ended somewhere in 2004, and I came back to this time instead of medical scientists. The greatest achievement, I think, is, was one building the department with NIMS, subsequently building one here, which is on par with any other department. And we have the greatest unity, I think, is a real fabulous thing to have. I mean, this is something which you don't see in most other people because each of us think uh, we are in this battle. Yeah. No, we need a thread which keeps all the best yes. together. And so, and so, so. You are, what you need to understand is if you grow, it's good. But if you make others grow along with you, it's even better. And if they grow more than you, it's the best thing. So you're a student reaching higher levels, I think it gives you enormous satisfaction. Sure, sure, sure. Like in one of the, like I came across one book by Adam McKay. He says medical profession, this day, at least, medical profession is the most underprivileged, unsupported, often physically endangered as well. So when we see you talking to the patients, the rapport that you seem to have with them, and generations across, the other day I was speaking to your very first uh, student, Devashi, sir, from Latu. So he remembered telling that there are almost like generations, three generations in a family who have been following with you. Same was told by even Vinay, sir. Like, yes, sir. So he remembered just coming to your opening once and we've been talking to the daughter and then the grandfather is sitting there and he's telling that I have been also been sitting by you. No, but that is inevitable, so, isn't it? I mean, in the sense that if you have been practicing for years together, every one of us will develop bonds, develop uh, I mean, each person comes with trust, and trust is something which you have to develop. And if you are giving the right advice, I mean, I'm, I, and more important, of course, is to say that you are not right all the time. Sometimes you'll be wrong, but you have to have the ability to say I'm wrong, to learn from, it. and that I think keeps you going. And if you can tell your patient that yes, I was wrong. And this is what I'm going to do for you. Maybe this is how I thought. I've done that a number of things. It just builds bridges. And most important thing people don't have to forget is patient is a person. A person is the most important thing. And so in, in our hub, I mean daily humdrum of life, very busy, very occupied with doing the doing the so what we forget is at the base of all this. The only person who matters, what anybody has made you today, what you are, is the patient. And if the patient is a person, and if you don't forget it, you'll never have problems with somebody saying, no, 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 you're not doing it right, or you're not, I can't wait, or I can't. But tell them, like, you have to wait about an hour today, this is what it's in. Why you have to wait? I don't like it. I don't like to keep people waiting a long time. I like to finish them on time, they were given, but it's not. Always possible in our yeah. world. So you need, so what has kept me going? Patient undoubtedly, but the next person, as I told you, about is student. Student yeah. is what makes me come early. Yeah. 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 And student is one which I love teaching. Teaching is not just uh, for sake of saying remember this or remember that, but you say okay. how, yeah, yeah. how it is how. Why you should think of this? Why you should not think of it? And modify your thought process. And I think a good teacher should be able to do that. And the other day I heard a very interesting story that I don't know I never heard before. But this was in another great person's uh, obituary. And he said, there are people, there are teachers, there are uh, what you call uh, guides, there are mentors. And there's one title called teacher mentor. Teacher mentor is something 
It says it's not only you teach you know, the subject of your company, you teach about life. Yes. If you can tell that to your students, this is the right thing to do. Right? I think I've to a certain extent succeeded. That's what gives me the research. But today's practice when we are seeing so many cases of uh, suicide, the patient altercations, like, what will be your advice to our young coming, putting your lives? Yeah, I think like, the same thing is, finally, if you treat them on, as people, not as patients, I think half the problem is the world. And uh, say the numbers now, for example, I'm seeing 35 years old, 42 people. Sure. And a lot of times we don't remember the name of the day. We don't call them. Yeah, hmm? No, no, I'm just saying. True. So by calling by name, so remembering that she came last time, came with the father or something like that, right? To doing this brings that touch of, I mean, togetherness. And that keeps up most of your issues of, I think that's the best thing you can do. But sometimes today, life is different from what it was earlier. Things are going to get a little, but I think it will always help. If you have one member of the family who says, no, no, I have to make sure they always, he's always been good to us. Sure. The, the whole thing gets simmered now, gets subsided. But yes, still certain things happen in the heat of the moment, especially in an emergency. So protect yourself. But yeah, unfortunate. More than 50 years of neurology practicing now. So like, what advice would you the difficult task to handle, what helped you balance for like your family, personal friend, as well as the professional? I think you have been done way just to some work. I think see, the same issue applies. I think you know somebody asked me always, I earlier also said that who gives you the ultra, who makes you do be what you are to. I think I owe a lot to my dad, first and foremost, because he was such a Man of such a man of integrity and intelligence, both. And I think he is actually considered in his police service in Andhra Pradesh as Bhishma Pitama. Some people call me this neurology now. That's, that's what happened with him as you grow with age. So you need to. So he was right. So he following in, he used to be hard work, he used to be sincere, and these things which I learned from him. But in the sense, you also have to run a family. I think there, I have nothing else to say, but my wife, she is uh, a doctor herself. She's from the FMC. I met her in Southern Hospital. And I was a house surgeon and she was in town. And that's how anyway, we met. We got married in 1973. But she has taken the responsibility of the house. Totally. She yeah. runs it. And I don't Almost do nothing at home. Not really she's she's shameful. Eventually she is shame. I am it's shameful I don't do it, but it is a fact of life. True, she true, takes true. charge of everything. And that has allowed me to you know, use more time in work. And she understands that each has been over this. She has put properly put her profession a little behind in the process. And so I think. Today, I went to uh, I know, uh, in so many ways. And that's the way I would say today I'm able to spend so much time, even spending even late. Today. Now, of course, I've changed my time schedule completely to exams where it could not end till late, 5 30, uh, 4 or 5. That's in the, uh, Anjana Madam, Thavar, she's an eminent oncologist, oncology uh, palliative care physician, both very well spoken and one common thing that keeps them going, both are wonderful singers. For some of you who might have attended 2019 here at Hyderabad, they both sung a duet. And we have been singing a duet over the years. That was the first time that I got to attend. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, how was the journey through your family life? No, yeah, I think it's been good because we have two sons. We have a family, we have three grandchildren. Maybe I think about 14, 12, and 9. The youngest is the granddaughter, and of course, she is the couple of die, which is very vicious, a lot of fun. But uh, my elder son, and they live in Mumbai. My younger son, 
it is with us. So, so the time goes by, then you, you work in the hospital. I still happen to work quite a few hours in the hospital, so that also takes up my time. So that's not an issue. But I have other interests. Maybe other interests have been one passion to travel. Travel, especially by road. When you make me sit behind the wheel, you can find it very difficult to get me off the wheel. Even today. If I sit behind driving, I'll drive. And I've driven at a straight and in a given day about 1150 kilometers in this country, from Cochin to Hyderabad on one street. At a time, starting in the morning, at yeah, five o'clock, seven thirty. That was about five years ago. And uh, the only companion, of course, in this very strong companion is my wife. Yeah. And my children have developed the same passion. They also love driving. Which is, we have been quite, I mean, definitely, as I said, my childhood was uh, spent in driving the car and then subsequently yeah. driving your side. And I have driven almost all over the country. From north, east, south, west, yeah, right through. I've driven from Simla to Kulu, I've driven from Delhi to Hyderabad, Hyderabad to Mumbai, Hyderabad to Most memorable gentleman. I think one of the best I had was from Delhi to Kulu, across Bihar, by the side of Riyas. It was a very beautiful, but God by the side, a little of this, but in the whole family side. It was a wonderful journey. But I think, uh, I mean, the cars improved with time. I've aged with time, but I still love driving. Today also, the COVID kept us off, but I think I still drive. The other day I drove it when I had So driving is a great thing. Second thing which I love is mu music, but I didn't realize about music for a number of years. Even in college, I never took part in a cultural program. I played table tennis, I played cricket, I played all those, but no, I took part in singing. So maybe we were with the thing. Nothing, that I could see. It's only, I think, very recently, about four or five years ago, I realized I can sing. In one meeting, I just sang and people liked it. And then nowadays, I know there is karaoke and all that. So you have an app. So I started yeah, singing. I, I, I got quite a few songs on cover. My wife sings, but she sings much better than me. I don't, I don't know. But I sing, and I sing for my enjoyment. I am very fond of Mukesh songs and Kishore to her. Some, sometimes I sing that feature, even when I read So I, I don't know. I, I sing very much like this was. So I've been singing, I've collected a lot of them. So singing is, so when we feel a little lonely or otherwise, we can always take a mic, sing, record, hear. That would have but, been immediately. Like but more than these two, I think I spend a lot of time reading. Reading has been my one of my earliest loves from my childhood. And this I attribute to, to friends of mine, actually who were children of my father's uh, friend in his fourth class. Okay, they were together from their fourth class. And his, they met again in Hyderabad. And their children and we were in the same place. We're staying in Kosovo. These people inculcated me with it, this thing of reading. I think I was just about nine. Yeah. And they really put me, okay, you should be reading this. You should be reading that. I went on reading. Reading again, a passion. And I remember we had uh, a library in uh, hospital in King or Sadar Patel hospital. So there was a library, ah, not in the book. I, they were all classics, all fiction, everything. All fiction. Everything, all fiction. Everything then happened. But, and we had our 25th Silver Jubilee meeting in college. Actually, the librarian came and said, sir, this card is for you. You have been the only one who has completed all these books in the library. I has finished all, all the sections. Yeah. So, so I mean, what I'm saying that, and today I read, I can't go to sleep without reading. I sleep, I mean, I read some neurology too, but most of it, yeah. invariably I read fiction. And if, sometimes I read up to two o'clock in the night, three o'clock in the night, the time just goes. But if I read it often, book, it has, I just forget about it. Then so, book it. 
fourth thing which I really loved doing is playing bread. I used to play a lot of uh, bridge you know, going, going to the club and all that, but it interfered with my profession. That was about 25 years ago. So it was interfering with my profession. So I decided to quit. I didn't play bridge for 20 years, or maybe about 30 years, 35 years. I didn't play for about a number of years. But then by the time I've settled down into a more serious life, you know, life is different, then I can have more time on that. Then bridge came back. The vengeance because now it's available on the net. I don't you have to go here, interest. there, or anywhere to play. Cool. Second thing is, I have uh, now holding sometimes cards is a little troublesome because of my trouble, so it's easier to play on the net. And I, I there's no day I don't play. I play one tournament or the sometimes I come first, I come last, doesn't matter. I do because sure. it is some is again fantastic. Thing to know. It's uh, again great mind blowing. It is gives you so much pleasure as well as makes you think. Yes. And every deal is different. And so I think that's how. Most often, like I remember you telling about even your love for chess. So yeah. chess, I used to play early. I sort of slowly up to college. I played. I was uh, one year I was champion of the college also. But uh, what happens is. Your interests are well differ, and something else takes over, and then it sort of. But I think by the time I, I think book the core actually more than just smallest of textures that change the course. But books, but books are something today. I really, I go back. I will definitely be reading. So there's no way without reading the book, without playing a game of. A song or so. Sometimes I do without this, but that's. She's a multifaceted personality. I love to do things, so I enjoy it. That's right, sir. Like, this might be one of the what you would like to tell for our young neurologists also to prevent an early physician burnout. People have been practicing, practicing so much that uh, we find people getting tired even now by the end of their residency itself. So, no, how do you manage last... doing all this? There is a vast difference between then and now. In the sense, uh, because we see, for example, when we passed out, there was nothing like anybody is interested in seeing outside. We wanted to be an institution. And love was a part of the institution, teaching or doing something. Like and uh, I think even it was, uh, if you wanted to, you could set up practice, put up a board. But that didn't satisfy. But now I think the numbers are huge. Now, for example, competition for, suppose you do a DM in neurology or DM in what do you do next? Yeah. You don't have a place in institutions. You have to go out. Then where do you go? If you go in, uh, in the same city, it's a very serious competition. Yes. Then you have to work very hard. And so that will lead to some amount of work. If you go to the district, then you have to satisfy a few other or some other options or something which you have to satisfy, which is not again something which one would like to do. But then you are not left with many options. Suppose you were today, I find, for example, in a district, it will be a place will be allotted in that area, in the district town. And then there will be one uh, physiotherapist, one pharmacologist, one uh, pharmacist, one uh, dentist. One, politician yeah, occupying yeah. that space and they're going to give you space there to work for a salary. It doesn't satisfy It's because you want to do something. But then, then you build the hospital. Then all this leads to a lot of enormous problem. And then both husband and wife are the family gets. So these all these get lead to burn out. But how do you prevent it in the present day juncture? The whole world is moving differently than what it used to be. So now you can't tell somebody you don't do that. Yeah. So they have to, but of course, it runs on money. It always ran on money, but money wasn't that important. Not the driving force, at least. So that's why yeah. this thing's happening. I remember talking to even Krishna Reddy, sir. So he was discussing how you, all three of you, since long, 
time used to be together discussing cases Saturday night meetings yeah. off level night meetings so no dr krishna reddy is uh, a surgeon is senior to me by function actually and he's a year senior to me in bbs but about two years senior to me see it and uh, he also did from all it is since say but we were classmates from school we were classmates in school then right from school. delhi all in the we were in andhra school in delhi we did our ninth and tenth i was only there for two years this chap did from sixth class onwards to the high secondary but i left my father again to yeah so the same reason we i mean we sort of lost touch but my father went back to delhi in 64 this chap went to ahmedabad to do his mbbs so when i went to his old house to look for it, i found the house i found the people this chap had bought it so i left my number i said when this chap comes get it you can and that's how we kept touch we can do there was no cell phone no thing so this is how but we began and this fellow came back to do his mch in all india institute of medical sciences in 33 and 33 is when i got married so i went and invited him to both went to me to me and invited him i said this guy who should and so far and he got married only 4 years later so what happened in this period when my first son was born and all everywhere we used to be so that is how it is and today also say for example any society is formed invariably either he is the president and vice president or vice versa something even now most of it and we even today we run a place called twin cities association the doctor woman christianity and the name people behind it and uh, today it's almost about 25 years it's running without break the partly it's the camaraderie the friendship the, yeah. the thing there's hardly any day in a week i mean i mean one week doesn't pass by without me coming to his place going to his place yeah. so that has remained and uh, he was with when he was here of course we are uh, much more closer in the subject also but now we do discuss but not to the same degree now he is in front of us as a passing remark what will be your final advice for our young chaps i i think the still it remains in spite of that that all the taraf media are there that mean i told you earlier that i was very fortunate to be the first one to be in institution where this first ct scan that was in all india institute of medical sciences it ct came in that itself i was a lecturer about it then i was in Then the Institute of Medical Sciences was the first MRI. So it was a four hour point three test, but 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 yeah, but yeah. And actually, I predicted at that time that MRI will revolutionize, not CT, and which is fact. But even then, but before you ask anybody to do any investigation, like for example, electrophysiology, you want to do MRI, you must tell what you are. Yes, yes, unless you have the right diagnosis i think one of the best advices i can give younger people is you have to put down your thought of it come into something yes come in there saying this is my diagnosis first maybe or the second or the third whatever give a differential but what is your first and how will you plan so these things are missing most of the prescriptions today nobody is writing the diagnosis you should if you see, commit a diagnosis you not tomorrow you are right or for right you can say that so that is what i would advise not the passing thought about what about patient uh, problems or otherwise is it because i think one of the things which has hit us very badly is uh, something we call as uh, uh, what we do as we created them what is that called hydrogenesis that's called hydrogenesis why this is important is at least you know what hippocrates of course hippocrates no more 
considered the oath which we have to take it's today. We have to take a pledge now, apparently. But what is if you don't do good, don't do harm. At least do. do no harm. And that part is not always a year. So hydrogen is a part of our life. And one of the things I always remember as when I was in intern, one chap was operated for an appendix. He didn't have appendicitis. He had pain of time, but it was thought as appendicitis, operated. Fine, he went home. Then in a few months, he came back with subacute interstitial. So there was then a nice toilet pitch and all the peritone and toilet was done. It was for a while, it was. But by the time I was in house surgery, surgery this chap came back with a full fledged, full blown intestinal obstruction. Then, uh, such the is, and then the he died. I was holding his hand when I was there almost 36 hours sitting in the right side. I'm going into that's one thing which you learn. You should try to learn another thing. And which helps a lot. And so, what happened is, it, and this is only an instance, I'm just telling you that a lot of patients were neurocystic cirrhosis were treated with liver and it was drugs producing hepatitis too. It caused hell. I've seen that to happen, but so many other instances. So what you need to do is just don't give anti of that. Or you think without knowing if it's a single pellet. So poor fellow will be on medicine for 20 years, 15 years, because he might still get an episode. So think if it happens to you, put yourself in that. I think that would be my last thing I would like to say. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quote like Robert Frost, two roads divert in the woods, and I think they to take the less traveled one, and that has made what the difference is. Want to put it in a song or would you like to end it with a? No, what I think is, song? see, that's a lot of times people may say, How did you decide that you become a neurologist? How did you become? I don't think you can, I can say that I decided to be involved this very early. But at least once I joined medicine, I made it up. Very few people do it when they are in medicine, third year or fourth year. They decide a little later. I decided to do it. But this is all possibly as it goes along. So maybe I can put it in my strong with basically. We'll be connecting with Thank you.